um, what is now the fourth presentation of this year's uh, Boston Arts Community Film Festival, the 18th edition. My name is Amir Husak, and I'm one of the programmers of this year's festival. Um, tonight, uh, we have a special pleasure to uh, to show the new feature film by Pierre Jalitza, director of Sarajevo, uh, director Pierre Jalitza, who's also with us uh, tonight. Uh, Focus Grandma, uh, Focus Grandma, the newest feature by Pierre Jalitza, uh, takes us back to the fateful April of 1992. Uh, the film uses the microcosm of a family conflict over a dying matriarch to reflect the wider tension bubbling to the surface on the eve of the war in Sarajevo. Um, if you've seen uh, Pierre's previous films, um, you know that you're in for a special blend of humor, of drama, of farce, of melancholy, and I would also say hope. So enjoy the film and make sure you stick around because Pierre is here with us and he's going to join me and my fellow programmer Diana Jelic on the stage up here for a Q&A. So sit back, enjoy the film. problema. <laughs> Testament, al novi, nov žleđa. Kopaju se rovovi iznad Sarajeva. Ovo ovde iznad Sarajeva, pa vidiš li gdje kakve rovove? Kako ste ih mogli poslati tu smrt? Pa ja, za rat je potrebno dvoje. Za rat je dovoljno pola budale. Imaš li što je ova? Znala se. Good evening, everyone. My name is Diana Jelača. Uh, I'm a co-programmer of the Bosnian-Herzegovina Film Festival alongside Amir, who introduced the film. We're just waiting for our director, Pierre Žalica, to make it to the stage. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you. Hello again. Uh, we're very excited to have Pierre here with us. Uh, Pierre Jalitza is a born in Sarajevo, graduated directing at the Sarajevo Academy of Performing Arts, where he's now teaching as well. And during the war years between 1992 and 1995, he was an active member of the Sarajevo group of authors, also known as Saga, making numerous films about the life under the siege, including The Boat in 1992, MGM Sarajevo in 1994, and Children Like All Others in 1995. His films were shown at renowned festivals worldwide, including Cannes, Montreal, London, Rotterdam, and countless other festivals. Uh, he's the recipient of the European Film Academy Award in 1994, and his 2003 feature film, Fuse, won the Silver Leopard at the Locarno, Best, uh, Locarno Film Festival and Best Feature at the Sarajevo Film Festival, as well as a special jury award uh, at the Zagreb Film Festival. Welcome, Pierre. Fantastic to have you with us here. Thank you. How are you? Uh, adjusting to New York and the jet lag. <laughs> well, since I'm here for the third day, I think so, so it's fine. Yeah. Last night was a little bit like 
This breaking point was last night, I think so. So now I feel like uh, American, then day after tomorrow I will again feel like Bosnian. So <laughs> crazy life, a roller coaster. It seems like we timed it right for your presentation to feel kind of in between, somewhat <laughs> Bosnian, somewhat <laughs> American. <laughs> Uh, because um, since my involvement with the festival, I haven't had the pleasure of being uh, in your presence. Is this your first time with BHFF? We've shown your films uh, before, but are you attending uh, for the first time? No, no. I, I was in New York for, for Tribeca two times. Mm -hmm. And once at some film festival in on Long Island, some place I don't remember really. But never, I, I was never at, at this festival, so I'm very happy to be here, really, finally. And uh, when your festival becomes active, I was inactive ma making these fi fi fiction films. So I made some documentaries and they were screened at the festival, so maybe you don't invite people who are making documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We, we're always yeah yeah no no I, I'm, I'm joking but I remember that it was always difficult to yeah, find yeah. the logistics yeah, yeah. Th that, and it's simple true it was never possible till, till now and now I'm, I'm in the middle of post-production of new film so this was a really nice break in that process yeah which is exciting but exhausting at the same time so of course so it was nice to come even though in four days because I I could not stay longer because I have to get back to, to continue to finish new film. That, that in, and in, in fact, at some point, we were hoping to have you here with both of the films, but mm -hmm. the, well, the one you're better, working on year by year. Next year. I mean, it's, we're yeah. going to reserve yeah. that. But I hope that next year your film will last seven days. <laughs> <laughs> always looking to extend. But so, let's talk uh, about Focus Grand Maya. Yeah. So this film, I, I thought a lot about just going back to April 1992, um, because your other film, which I really, really love, Days and Hours, um, is it's happening after the war, and it's a moment yeah. of kind of moving on or attempting to move on after this shadow of the war. And here we are really at the eve of the war. Can you tell us a little bit about this idea and how this film started and what really well. drove you to make it? Well, in fact, I, I attended the screening, which, which is not quite usual, I think, for any director. You just, you got this sick of your own film, so you feel like on Wild Sea when you're watching your movies. Mo most of the people I know uh, has that kind of feeling. I, I heard that Tarantino does not, he enjoyed every time in his movies, but it, it's, it's a little Surprising. bit, I mean, he's genius, but it's obvious. So I, w I attended the screening because I was not to remember quite well the movie, because, you know, after it was made in such a crazy rush. They, they were an idea of uh, Sarajevo Film Festival and the Turkish television to make the feature film so they they had like uh, they they invited i think 21 of us in originally from greece to slovenia to send uh, a short synopsis like half page story and they chose this story. So I had the story and just started to, to develop it for uh, for my fourth film, in fact, fifth. Uh, because I, I was in preparation for this film I, I'm just finishing. And I had this like uh, plot, which is based on, on, on my own family, which is not evil like this one, but some jokes are coming from the family. So I, I it started with this sentence, my uncle really says my, my father, slept away alive and, and awake dead. So so it was, you know, I was just, I don't know, I was playing with that, with that story, not having a structure still. And because they, they pick up the stories, I was forced to, they says, okay, now you should finish it in two months. 
So I had 60 day, 45 days to, to develop first version of scripts. And I did it in two months. And then uh, we were shooting like 25 days after it. So it was really like crazy process. Uh, working with, I would say, no budget. It was really like uh, so low, low, low. Uh, but, you, you know, all of us were at said, okay, we could do it once in a life. I mean, you know, ever, because this cast is quite, I mean, for, for Balkans, it's, it's really like strong cast. So we said, okay, let's do it. And it was, it has this, this potential of uh, feeling younger than, than you really are, you know. And, I, and so I was not sure what I'm doing, you know. I mean, I think that some of these things obviously should be you know, visible. Uh, but I loved, I loved the film. I think that we made, made good, I mean, it was big effort and uh, crazy, really crazy time. And uh, we enjoyed, but we would never do it again. I think so. The, the, we would never do it, do the same process. But once in a life, it's really good. You know, it was you know it's interesting when you said that when I in front of a theater right before the film, and you said like, "I'm going to go in actually and watch it because I yes, I, I, I it. haven't seen it for I, I don't know two years." But then I also thought two years is is uh, last two years feels like I don't know twenty years, and I I'm remembering things from 2019 and it feels like it was a long time ago, and I'm trying to collect. So I also thought yeah, but like well, parallelly I was making new film, you know. So just when I finished this one, I started preparations and, and had shooting of uh, new films. So it, it was a really you know, kind of exciting, hectic times you know so I something surprised me really tonight you know some some were funny to me some mistakes were like it's more painful but never mind you know I will pretend that I'm Tarantino and, and I will enjoy it so you could criticize it as much as you want I'll still enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> the cast is absolutely stellar. It's uh, first of all, I, at some point, I do want to go back to hearing what that half page pitch was of if. Oh, there were no time for back, pitch. I mean, that, it that was so back, short that there were no question, time right? for pitch. So, so April of 1992. But I also want to talk about the cast. So, well, which one I, do you want to address first? I would be really like uh, I won't be modest now. Next two minutes. Because the only pitch I had with these actors were, I'm making new film, do you want to act? That, that's all I said. And, and every, all of them says yes. And I says, I mean, you will talk with producers, but we have no money. You know, they have no money. I, I, you. And they said, no, never mind. You know, okay, we will do it. So, so that was the pitch. And, so, and uh, we had the rehearsals. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. It, their energy seems so effortless. How much rehearsal was there in that uh, process? I mean, there were, there were in fact, for a, for a film process, there were a lot of rehearsals. We had re first rehearsals, uh, rehearsal project, uh, process at the Sarajevo, during the Sarajevo Film Festival in August. So we were working like five days in a row at the actual location. S and it was, the, the script has no ending still so we read it we were reading it for a two two days and then acting writing uh, and and continue this that process uh, online next two months and then we gather again for the next few days when I finished like this second draft which was in fact first serious draft, I, I don't know, doing again together. And in the meantime, we were all the time in the contact. So actors had the the very active participation in writing. They were not uh, writing it, you know, literally, but but uh, I, we were communicating all the time. And, and then as the collective, uh, we were doing on it for a few days then. Uh, every day at, at the end of the shooting, we were preparing next day. So it was like, it was really tough. I mean, but uh, in a way we felt like we are in theater. 
even though you know it was really film shooting because every 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 shot was uh, was a premiere you know with with that kind of pressure we were we, but uh, that collective feeling was really like almost uh, mythical you know almost you are part of this uh, strange uh, theater i mean strange inspiring uh, process in theater so it was really nice um the I'm thinking also about your previous films and also working on documentaries as well. Um, I see that some of the cast members here are also people who you worked with before, obviously in the past. Yeah. And uh, but there are also some 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 new faces uh, in the yeah, film. I mean, that's normal. Yeah. Um, actors, and we've talked about this also earlier that a lot of these actors we see them in a lot of films. It's a very small community uh, in, in Sarajevo. You've been active there throughout the war and afterwards. Can you speak a little bit about how it has changed? Obviously, Sarajevo Film Festival has contributed a lot to that community kind of maybe growing and being still active, but it's very hard to make a film. Uh, well, we are we are a small country. I mean, it's uh, we were we were like around four million people so it's like a modest city in, in developed countries you know uh, and um, we are less and less unfortunately I think that I'm, I'm sure that now in Bosnia there is no more than three millions maybe because people are dying and leaving it's, 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 it's not good you know so it's kind of logical that community is not big and I think that that in fact uh, it's much more than in percentages than how much of how big is the whole population. You know, so uh, at the academy we constantly have students. So university has the problems because there is less and less students. But academy still has academy of. I, I think all of the academies, musical arts and and performing arts. We all have students, candidates, not only from Bosnia, which which are, we are really proud on that fact that people from whole former Yugoslavia are coming, uh, even Slovenians, even though they are not speaking, they are speaking different language, not just call it differently, but it's really completely different language. So. Mm, Difficulties are not coming out of that fact that we are small community because we are small country. The difficulties are coming because this small community is tortured by the by the psychopaths who call themselves leaders. I mean, and being uh, approved and supported, I would say, uh, by the colleagues from international community, including politicians from United States. And then you get, uh, speaking still of the cast, which again is stellar, it's not just Bosnian actors, you get Croatian actors like Alma Prica, and you get Mira Banjic, <laughs> who's I mean, a, just incredible living legend. Yes. So she, it's such an amalgamation. She of turned her, out 90 mm -hmm. at, at, during the shooting. So it was, we had birthday, and she was the. She was suffering, lying in the bed all the time, you know. She was, she was jumping from the bed and <laughs> telling the stories from the mid-last century, which were so vivid and, and important still today. You know, she's, she's really somebody, you know. And for us, it was, it, it was really something big, you know, for all, for all of us. It's, I don't know, how could you compare it with... I mean, but when you are working with somebody who is literally the history of of Balkan cinema and European cinema, in in, in a way, and I mean, she was participating in so important things in history of cinema that you know, and now she's acting with really. She was not. It was not uh, complicated to work with her on set and. It was more complicated to, to you know, to, to, to calm her down than to, to fire her up, you know. She, she's living fire still. She's a really nice woman and a lady. 
That's and amazing to hear like because this. that history of her in, in Yugoslav and Balkan cinema also harkens uh, and connects to the fact that the film is about what is about to end and what is about yeah. to be violently broken down, which is the legacy, the shared legacy of Yugoslavia yeah. into space. I mean, she agreed with, with, the, with the thesis of, of the film and with the reasons we are telling this story, which was quite important part for us, especially since coming from, from Belgrade, which, which could be, you know, you, now we are witnessing that, you know, it, it's, it could be difficult and we could have some kind of understanding for the position and point of view, but uh, when it's important, you should have, you should choose your side, and I mean, you should, you should, you should make, do the right thing, I mean, it's, it's, and, and she was, she, she did the right thing, I think, so, as all of us are, you know, so, you know, we are not, as as this small community, we cannot uh, make us even smaller. You know, we are just colleagues, friends, and this crew was. You know, it was. I mean, we are still living in Yugoslavia. Whatever we could think, not in a political sense, but in that spiritual or cultural. You know, when we were together, it was like there were no war. You know, and. Even though we are, we were telling the story about about this um, generating the, the 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 ambience for the for for the disaster. Yeah. Now you also work with younger generations. I want to go a little bit away from the film. You work with students. Yeah. You see um, young directors that are, are doing work. Yeah. Uh, young actors. Obviously, it's a very difficult position to be in when there is no concrete state support for film or culture in general. Um, yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that and, and what alternatives do they find um, aside from traditional kind of film yeah. production? That we Maybe it sounds strange, but uh, things are a little bit better, you know, because TV changed a thing a little bit, changed things a little bit. The first regionally, Serbia and Croatia, they started to, to produce a lot of TV series. And uh, a lot of people from Bosnia also participated in those series. And now, uh, last year, I would say, uh, production in Bosnia also uh, developed. And um, it seems that it will continue to grow. So those young people got the chance to, to, you know, to practice more than just in theater. Because mostly, most of the actors and actresses uh, had the the practice in in theater. In fact, they hardly get chance to to act in, in TV or, or films. And even though in in, in uh, Eastern Europe, at part in particularly, it's not it was never divided. You know, actors uh, direct with directors, it's a little bit different. But with the actors, in fact, actor who is not acting in theater is not. Uh, participated as serious actor, you know, you should act in theater to be able to act in cinema. That that's the that's the idea. It's a little bit different than than here, I think. So here, it's you know, it's even division with, between TV and film is, is, is now it's less and less, but it it still exists. So so it's a little bit better, yeah, but. Uh, but you know, when you are at the academy, it's uh, it is complicated when you are uh, like teaching some but someone, but you're not sure that that he will be able to work uh, to make his own own films. But you know, I'm quite old, so I was professor to to assistant prof professor at the, at the time, higher assistant professor or to Yasmila, for example. And she did some whose film to, we're seeing yes to I mean to all of these actors who made our cinematography alive and uh, important at least from time to time internationally but for for us at, at Balkans I would say not only in Bosnia really important I mean cinematography is really important thing in in our small country I don't know how to call it
Yeah, and it's quite prolific, actually, considering the circumstances. It, it There's is, a lot yes. of work still happening. Yes. Considering the work. Yes. So it's uh, I I found it as a privilege to 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 have a chance to teach at the academy. Before we turn it over to the audience, um, it was really interesting to see in the film the push and pull in that moment of the imminent beginning of war. And I think this some of us have seen and relived flashbacks of this because of what's happening in yeah. the Ukraine of that beginning and. It's not going to happen. It is going to happen. Oh, yeah. People being in complete denial versus yeah, being yeah. very, very nihilistic about the whole situation. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the, that process. Well, uh, a few weeks ago, I saw some, I don't know, is it HBO or some produ production about this uh, Capitol Hill, January. The January 6th. 6th, yeah. yes. And it's, I mean, you are crazy lucky that it's had been finished like that. I mean, it, it's starting like that and it just explodes, you know. If somebody had, is crazy enough to, to have an idea, mm, strong enough, like if it's crazy enough not to pull the brake, it will just explode, you know. And it's really crazy, but it's in human nature to think it will not happen. But a lot of times it just happened, you know. People in Ukraine, now you can, you can still find the, 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 the interviews with, with normal, you know, like people in, in Kiev, they, they're saying, no, no, that nothing will happen. But also there were a lot of people who were preparing for, for war, you know. So, I mean, we had saying, during the socialism that let's leave like war will happen never, but let's prepare like war will burst out tomorrow. And we were laughing on it, you know, that, that my generation, maybe we were like, I think that we were first generation who was really making jokes about it because we didn't believe in it. We were, it was obvious that socialism would collapse and, at most, because people were calling it communism and it had no any connection with communism at all. It was kind of bizarre socialism, not non democratic, but had also some kind of, of good potential to develop in democracy. Unfortunately, instead, you know, I remember this uh, some friends from Slovenia, they were really like pushing hard towards the democracy, making making it really like uh, making statements which were really provocative at the time and, and they, they, they were poking the, that, that regime. And uh, we believed really, my generation, that they will understand that, okay, that they will accept the simple fact that it's better to have democracy than authoritarianism, I mean, totalitarianism. It's so simple, you know. But they didn't, you know. They, they just... So it's... Uh, I, I really... I wrote the script, but I really think that for war is... Half of the fool is enough to start the war. If he's in, in right position, uh, pos position, yeah. you could see it now with with Putin. I mean, everybody thought, no, 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 he will not do it, but he did it. Yeah. And unfortunately, lot of most of us in 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 everybody around me knew that he will do it. Better uh, the same as some intelligence services, like I think that that United States intelligence were clear that that war will will burst we were also clear we, i mean it was so obvious and now when i remember those days in 92 it was so obvious but we thought no 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 way no chance it could happen anywhere but not in sarajevo exactly your film actually reminded me of, of a conversation that i had with my sister who was studying in sarajevo at the time and i'm from bihać which is northwest but because the war already started in Croatia and Bihać was right on the border, yeah. we felt the, the war already kind of very close and we were kind of freaking out a little bit at that moment, yeah. even though it was late. And I remember a conversation with her on the phone in Sarajevo and she was just laughing it off. Yes. 
she was a you know she was studying and she's like no come on like you know and we were like well you know the situation here is just not you know it doesn't look good and I really remembered that your film really reminded me of that conversation I had with her and soon enough later she also came to be Hutch and then eventually we were out um, uh, we, were, we were out of the country uh, soon 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 later so we didn't really stay and didn't experience the, the horrors of the war but I remember the beginning and the difficulty of really believing one thing that I really appreciated in your film is that you show this disappearance of, of people who were around like Ranko the doctor yes. who just leaves disappears leaves his workplace doesn't really share that, only yes, maybe yes, shares yes. with some... In closer. silence, really. In silence. I rarely see that in a film, and I remember that happening in yeah. mass, where just, you know, kids to, the, who were in school with me, that all of a sudden, next day you come, and there's like two people missing, and then they're not there for yeah. the next few days. And, and a lot of lie. people were not we communicating the, the information. Exactly. You know, they knew what will happen, and they did not mm -hmm. tell it to everybody. I think they were afraid, you know. Probably, you know, it was not easy. But they they tell it to someone, you know, so you were like choosing to. I remember some phone call. I had a neighbor and she was, she was uh, something at the airport. She was doing some, I don't really know what. And she asked me, uh, look, there is a place in a plane for Titograd, Podgorz, so the, this Montenegrin capital at the time, tomorrow. So maybe you would like to fly. I thought, why? She said, I don't know, maybe you would like to, to fly to, Pod, to Titograd, to Montenegro. I know that you have some family there, so maybe it would be convenient for you. Later on, I found out that her close cousin was the some general of Yugoslav army in Sarajevo was later captured in uh, not captured but yes captured in that convoy okay. so it was so so she knew she just knew it, but she was really like diplomatic in she thought if I'm aware of the situation I will understand you know so but I I I now later on I First, I was like angry when I understood. Like, said, okay, she was. But later on, I find I understood that it was in fact an act of friendship. You know, it was, it was nice gesture. <laughs> People in the position of knowing something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do yeah. something for others. I was, by the way, one of those children who disappeared. Long story. Yeah. Let's turn it over to our audience. I think we've been patiently Before listening to our conversation. Before it turns into a little group therapy here. Yeah. <laughs> or if we welcome everyone's own stories, just raise your hand. It's so hard. Or we, to uh -huh, there is. is there a microphone here? Or we don't have one? Oh, there is one. Orfeas yeah. is going to bring the mic. In. Oh, thank you. Um, I just think this is a brilliant film. And I... That's enough. No, no, no. Thank no. You. I, just <laughs> brilliant. And um, I teach on the Balkans, and I worked for Frank McCloskey, who was, you know, there's a bridge named after him. And in the early days, my experience was he was in Sarajevo in December of 92, and I was in Washington, and he called the office... And so all the things that you're talking about, like, you know, the barricades, I mean, what's the ditches, like uh, everything that was being created to isolate, uh, isolate Sarajevo, I became intimately familiar with that because I was his military policy analyst. And um, I just think the dialogue engagement the dialogue and the humor. If there wasn't humor, I think it would be just really morbid and really difficult. And it was brilliant how you injected humor into the in the family discussions. And I really, I I really uh, appreciated that. And also, 
um, the fact that you would bring somebody into it that deserted the JNA. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. And this person, you know, actually saved Muhammad. Uh, it just was just done so well. And it is such a metaphor for the tragic uh, beginning and the what ensues. And I, I commend you. And I actually will show this film to my students without a doubt. Thank so thank you so much. Thank you. But, you know, there were some critics. Now I will, like, uh, because I feel a little bit, uh, um, you know, <laughs> it's nice to hear compliments, but at the same time, you know, it's you feel like I feel a little bit ashamed. Uh, there were some film critics who were writing, wrote, that the metaphor is so obvious that uh, it's um, finally obvious how director stupid is. So, you know, so brutal, you, you know. names. So, no, no, I, uh, those people are serious. It's not, I found it quite uh, not even offensive. I think that it could be accepted like that, you know. It could be understood like that, and I really... But I thought, and I would, I would lie if I was not a little bit like uh, afraid of uh, dealing with material in such obvious way. But I thought that the, the 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 subject is so important that I didn't care, you know. So if somebody find it stupid, I, okay, I mean, I I could accept it that that, that maybe I'm stupid, but. Uh, Please just understand that uh, horrible things are happening, and uh, no matter how stupid, stupidly, how stupid they look like, you know, finally they are just tragic. We have another question here. Thank you, and congratulations for the for for the film. I, you mentioned that when you started the rehearsal, you didn't know the end, and, yes. and as you said, now the end maybe was obvious in a way but still i think there is something that you are like you it it's obvious and it's not you don't know how you will end in a way you you can predict it but still i was like intrigued of how what what will happen how will you how will you end there are, there were many different ways you could have end actually so I'm, I'm curious how you arrived to the end for this process of working with the actors of rewriting well yes i i came to the solution finally working with the actors so we had i think three or four different solutions one were really funny uh, one was that the when the this shell starting to fell then the whole family carry the body of of the, of grandma through these uh, mountains around Sarajevo, and bombs are exploding. So it was, and they are carrying it, pushing it, pulling it. So it was like uh, quite like. <laughs> and you know, when you're working with actors, they are like kids. They they says that, and then this biggest actor he says, then I'm kicking the grandma with <laughs> with legs. <laughs> <laughs> like beating her up, and then she says, "Yes, yes, just beat me. I deserve it." <laughs> it was so, you know. We and then I says, "Okay." The other one was the uh, without this last sentence and uh, uh, this just explosion and and the end and the, the, the whole building destroyed and everybody killed. So finally, I really don't remember how we decided, I decided, of course, but how we came together to this kind, this solution that, okay, it's the bomb fell, which I really found like uh, hardly, hard to, to, to accept as the, as the solution. For me, it was a little bit, you know, you now now that bombshell fell exactly in the moment when we really, Suit it for for the story. I mean, it's it's a little bit like raping the the, the dramaturgy. 
but we had the feeling that it's necessary that that this metaphor should be open and understandable and uh, some colleague journalist from states uh, living in Greece he was the first one who was writing the the, the critics this analyze I don't know how to call it for variety uh, he agreed I mean that helped him to understand the film he says that helped me to avoid all of these local things to to be clear that I understood it well so uh, yeah maybe in a, in a history of film we will be remembered as the obvious stupid bunch of storytellers but on the other hand we we, we told the story we, we thought is important to be said so and I think that out of these three or four different solutions, finally we decided this one that after bombshell, uh, this one young woman who is the, the most like uh, arrogant one is the most afraid in fact, when she understood. And because that was one friend of mine who was, you know, he he was a really nice guy, and today he's a nice guy living in Chicago, by the way. Uh, before the war, he was extremely nationally, like, awoken, and he has this feeling that he's coming from some mid-age uh, battles and uh, still fighting. I mean, it was really, it was really crazy. But he was all in it, like six months before the war. He was at these barricades, putting those trees on, on, on the street. And we were trying to tell him, I mean, just awake. And when the first bullet was hit, shot, he flee. He understood, he just understood. He told me, he called me on the phone and he says, Hey man, it's not a joke. I mean, this this will be horror, and he flee. But he understood. I mean, it's, it's like like this one. So she he was the plot for this woman who's so arrogant, telling you, okay, my TV is telling the truth. You are stupid. You are burning this car wheels. I mean, yeah, I don't know. No, I, I wanted to say in, in one of the alternative endings of the actors carrying the grandma's body around, you meant female actors carrying the grandma's body while the male yes, actors yes, are directly yes, sure, sure, right? right? because we And have that, that was, thing. you know, uh, Barney, this big actor, Montenegrin, we, we, was, uh, we, we studied together. He was on acting class and I'm on the, on, I'm, I was on directing class and friends still there. It was that that he, it was in the script that he will just uh, took her and uh, you know he says no 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 way Montenegro I would never do that you know it's <laughs> it's not a job for a man you know and then I remember that it's really rooted in 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 some society in some parts of Montenegro still now one once I was shooting some some documentary in Montenegro in I mean in Balkans in, in up hills. And uh, there were some women sitting in a small room, dark room, and pregnant girl entered the room, and they all stood up. And I asked, why you stand up? What, what, what's happening? And they says, maybe she's carrying uh, male, Maybe she had his son in, in, in her. So it's maybe men and they should stand up. So it's really, you know, like stuff. <laughs> I hope it's changed. How flattering. <laughs> it's dark humor. This is what the film is about. Mm, yeah. Well, thank you all. And thank you, thank Pierre, you. for being thank here. Thank you, Pierre. Thanks all.